Danny Sorimpa is an uh, expert in health and longevity, the fund manager at AXA Investment Managers, and you're here to talk about ageing populations and how we can prepare for a, a longer time uh, in retirement, I guess. A um, couple of facts for you. I'm sure you already know this. Perhaps our viewers don't. Kids today should now plan for living until they're over 100 years old. And that by 2050, one person in six will be over 60, as opposed to today, it's only one person in 11. So we're living longer and very much more people will be uh, older, like so over 60. My head goes to pensions. I mean, are, are we planning for the future well enough? Yeah, so I thought obviously you use the word longer retirement. I, I'd argue maybe we should embrace a, a longer middle because I think the traditional life model that we've been grown up with, which is you get educated, you go and work, and then you retire at 65, I think uh, already you're seeing in many countries across the world, the UK raising retirement age to 68, auto enrolment in pensions, encouraging people to save as, as early as they can in their career. I think what you'll, you'll see though is, um, if we are going to live to 100 or, or older, um, working for 40 years or 45 years may not provide you then with sufficient income to retire for potentially 30, 35 or more years. So really it's about a longer middle, uh, a bit more kind of uh, variation, shall we say, to what we've typically seen in terms of that three-stage life model. When you say a longer middle, I mean, how much longer? Are we talking working till we're 75? Is that even possible? Well, I mean, I can only look at uh, the people around me and my parents and, and where they are in terms of their physical and mental well-being. Um, I saw a statistic the other week which uh, talked about the uh, mortality rate of a 75-year-old is the same as a 65-year-old back in 1960. So I think uh, the idea that at 65 suddenly we become a bit useless and on the scrap heap is, is really needs to change. Uh, it's clearly that we're a lot fitter, stronger and healthier uh, throughout 60, mm -hmm. 65, 70 and, and well beyond. And it really is a case of how long do you want to retire? How long do you want to be occupied with, with work? So how do you supplement your pension then? Because I guess you're going to want money to spend during that time. Uh, how do you make sure that you can live to a certain level? So I, look, I think uh, you have to come at it in different ways. Um, there'll be periods in your life where you'll draw down your income. There'll be periods in time when you'll be accumulating uh, wealth. Uh, and it's really about managing that process through the, you know, the, your entirety of your life. So there's no, I can't get, come with you a, a, a explicit number of how much we need to save or when we need to save. But uh, I think if we're, as a starting point, a, we need to save, and B, we're likely to have to save for longer because we're working longer, either out of choice or on necessity. I think that will stand you in good stead for the future. Do you think governments and pension systems right now um, are adequate for the future if we're starting to talk about this kind of retirement age? So, I mean, it's interesting. If you took the UK as an example, the UK pension was originally instituted in 1908. And in 1908, we were talking about retirement ages at 65, but life expectancy in 1908 was maybe 70, 75. You know, I haven't mm. got the exact number, but you weren't really expected to live that much longer beyond your retirement date. So now we're in a, in a world where you know, we've certainly got 50% uh, of children, or, have a, or children have a better than 50% chance of living to over 100. Uh, every 10 years, we're adding two, two and a half years to our lifespans. I mean, it's a, it's a real human triumph, but obviously we have to... Uh, uh, anticipate that and plan for that. Do people take it seriously enough though because I know I'm probably going to offend a lot of Millennials when I say this but they're not known for their savings prowess. So I think um, I think people are taking it seriously but it's not immediate so there's, there's they don't feel the pressure to save today and, and certainly I feel that pressure of well I'm just worried about trying to pay a mortgage or uh, mm. you know look after my children or whatever it will be um, but there has to be at some point a recognition that obviously we can't continue to, to spend freely and expect somehow that we'll be looked after by the state or otherwise. Uh, there needs to be much more ownership and, and that I'm sure will come. I think there's already a realisation that we aren't all going to be able to retire at 60 or 65 unless we're super successful perhaps. Let's uh, flip this on its head then because when we do retire, we are going to be spending more money because we're going to be fitter and healthier, presumably. Um, where are... Where is silver spending right yeah. now? Yeah, so I mean, there was a, um, a study done that suggested that the uh, over 65s is about a $15 trillion wallet by 2020. Um, so a huge amount of consumption growth 
uh, I think it was a study done by McKinsey, about 55% of consumption growth in developed markets is going to come from that over 60 bucket. And they are spending, uh, whether it be in financial and retirement planning, at its most, you know, sort of front end, as we talked about pensions, but equally travel and leisure. So, um, you know, the cliche of going on a cruise ship, perhaps, or going to a casino, two thirds of gaming revenues are generated by the over 55s. Um, the average age of a cruise ship passenger is 47. So, you know, it, there are uh, cliches, but they are true as well in the same breath. We're also looking at beauty. We're looking at companionship. Um, so as much as we obviously feel fitter and stronger, we want to look uh, as well as we can. Uh, and so there's multiple sort of aspects in terms of personal care, maybe even medical aesthetics, a Botox mm -hmm. or, a, or a dermal filler here. Um, we all want to retain our youthful lustre. I'm, I'm wondering if this is where Switzerland fits in, because, you know, we have the likes of Novartis Roche. We have a lot of biotech companies. Mm -hmm. Everyone's developing new innovations from our new universities here. Um, do you invest here in companies here? So absolutely. We, we are, you know, Switzerland is renowned, whether it be Roche, Novartis, uh, Alcon, uh, they're all uh, heavily focused on what will be ultimately an, an aging consumer and, and the one thing we know as we age um, we will only consume more units of healthcare so at 65 in the US healthcare spending doubles at 85 it quadruples so you know they're very well aware of these long-term chronic disorders and coming up with innovations to address that uh, whether it be vision in the case of Alcon you know if you look at um, two-thirds of the visually impaired are over the age of 50 um, so that's a, a huge tailwind for, for an M market like Alcon's. Um, Novartis and Roche are developing uh, multiple cancer therapies, which you know, is one of the big diseases of the aging. It is obviously cancer mm -hmm. and or diabetes or indeed dementia. So there's multiple avenues where you know, they're trying to obviously uh, And there's address. also the beauty industry as well. Yeah, less, um, I guess, less well uh, exposed in Switzerland per se, but you know, you've certainly got uh, the likes of uh, Allergan in the US, who mm -hmm. are the makers of Botox. Um, and also dermal fillers. Uh, there's Ibsen in, in France who also make uh, a Botox. So teeth, yeah. So Straumann would be a great example in, in Switzerland. Um, I was just saying earlier, I think the number is that one in four people over the age of 75 in the US have literally no teeth. Um, and I think it's as, as, as many as, a, well, certainly it's about 15 to 20 percent even of the over 65s have no teeth so you know there's a huge opportunity there when it comes to maybe dental implants so uh, this societal shift this aging population it's potentially a challenge for uh, pension schemes but it's a real opportunity for some business i think uh, companies are just uh, starting to feel their way out to this uh, aging consumer i don't even think aging consumer is the right word because at 60 it really isn't old nowadays. Um, 60 is maybe the new 40. Uh, so I think uh, absolutely uh, companies are starting to realise there's this huge wallet of opportunity, huge amount of spending power uh, tied in these over 60s. Mm -hmm. I think you've looked at the US, 70% of US wealth is held by the over 50s. So it should absolutely be a target um, in spite of the fact that obviously majority of advertising revenues are, are focused on those millennials you talked about. And what about healthcare insurance? I mean, is that a whole other sector that we haven't yet talked about? I mean, w will this cost us more in the future? So look, I think um, there's absolutely a double-edged sword to this. So if you were to look globally, about 70% of healthcare spending across the world is paid for by government. Um, yes, there are obviously are private health insurers and um, provision of private medical care, but that may not be available to everyone. And so there will obviously be an increasing burden attached to that. You only have to look at the UK's NHS mm. as a prime example. But what I would say is there are clearly multiple companies that are focused on delivering healthcare more efficiently, reducing the waste, uh, getting more bang for the buck in essence, because clearly with a growing and older population, healthcare spending will go up. And I, I, I want to get to the kind of crux of how we should be investing our money for a longer life. I mean, should we change our strategies? Well, I mean, it, it depends on your, um, your time horizons. So it's interesting, I think, um, when That's you hit the age... It's pretty difficult to tell. <laughs> yeah, and everyone's different, clearly, and, and there's no right or wrong answer for one person. Um, but at the age of 50 or 55, I think pensions automatically put you in towards a more uh, risk, uh, risk averse portfolio, maybe more inclined to invest in bonds uh, as you reach closer to that retirement date. Um, and I think we've, uh, AXA have certainly done uh, surveys and studies about actually people should be willing to potentially take more risk uh, in spite of them reaching that 65 year of age uh, to retire. Because obviously if you are going into bonds and you have to re 
um, rely on that income for 35, 40 years, uh, you may not get the growth required and maybe actually having more risk in your portfolio in the shape of equity exposure uh, would help uh, offset or compensate for the fact that you have to have a larger pot of money or a pot of money that has to last longer.